Thank you for listening, downloading, sharing, subscribing, commenting, donating, and praying for us. And for going to BrotherLance.com to get the free PDF of this teaching. BrotherLance.com Okay, so now we know that the flesh is bunk. It's no good, right? It leads you to trouble. Your heart's messed up. Your brain's messed up. Basically, the whole unit is messed up. It's broke, right? And so, but now we have to understand we have two options. We have spirit versus the flesh, right? So let's read it. We have two options. Number one, submit to our flesh and all of its desires, which I do not recommend. And number two, submit to the Holy Spirit of God and follow its lead. So we must truly believe that we have an enemy in the flesh and that we battle every day. If we overlook this key aspect, we will be derailed by the flesh at every single turn. And see, that's what's happening in the church right now. That They're being taught the devil's not real. He's defeated at the cross. You never have to worry about him. And you don't have to do anything. You don't have to obey God. So they're being totally disarmed. So they don't understand that they're in a spiritual battle and that their flesh is out to get them. Right? But that, that's not us. I'm telling you guys, listen, it's tough. It's hard. You got to walk with uprightly with God. You know, but if, if you're that way, how easy of a target is saying? It's like moving into a neighborhood with, that you're surrounded by thieves, but being told that there is no thieves out there and you don't have to lock your door. But the one telling you that is the thief. <laughs> right? And that's exactly what's happened because the devil comes to lie, kill, steal, and destroy. And he's trying to convince the body of Christ, oh, you don't have to worry about me. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> We're good. No worries. And you know what? You don't have to do anything else. Right. You know, it's like getting in a ring with a boxer and you're convinced the other boxer, I'm not here to fight you and you don't have to punch back. Right. So just stand there and then I'll beat you to death. Because I convinced you that, hey, eh, there's no battle. First Corinthians 3, 1, 2, 3. Brothers, I couldn't speak to you as, a, as to spiritual, but as to fleshy, as to babes in Christ. <laughs> he makes a <laughs> distinction, does he not? Babes in Christ are stuck in the flesh. That's where most of the church is. In verse 2, I fed you with milk, not with meat, for you weren't ready. Indeed, not even now are you ready. Ouch. Verse 3, you are you are still fleshly. For in so as far as there is jealousy, strife, and factions among you, aren't you fleshly? And don't you walk in the ways of men? We don't want to walk that way, right? So Paul's making a distinction here that, listen, you baby Christians, you guys can't even handle Bible studies like this one. You know, it's too much for you, you know, because your brain and your spirit's not able to chew on it and digest it and it means nothing to you and you get tired and you're just like Ugh, you know and so but see that's where the devil wants you he wants you where you have no appetite for the spirit no ability to digest it and no way to apply it and then you're just an easy victim right and so we don't want that so we, we want to be on the, the the spiritual side that's strong romans 8 1 through 11 it says there is therefore no condemnation to those who are in christ jesus that's us who don't walk is that a distinction he made a distinction, right? So we just talked about baby Christians who walked in the flesh. He's making a distinction, is he not? He says, there is therefore no condemnation. Those, predicate number one, who walk in, are in Christ Jesus and don't walk according to the flesh. So if, you're, if you believe you're in Jesus, but you're walking according to the flesh, is there condemnation? Yes, there is. Mm -hmm. You will be judged. <laughs> so here we go. Who don't walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So you have to be in Christ Jesus. You have to be walking in, in the spirit and you have no condemnation. Doesn't mean you're perfect. Doesn't mean you won't make mistakes. It just means now you have a different leader. Okay. Verse two, the law uh, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ. Jesus made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law couldn't do and that it was weak to the flesh, God did, sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. Verse 4. That the ordinance of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh. Right? We don't want to walk after the flesh. We're out walking after spirit. But after the spirit, for those who are living according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who are live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For the mind of the flesh is death, but the mind of the spirit is life and peace, because the mind of the flesh is hostile towards God. Right? He's a competitor. For it is not subject to God's law, neither indeed can it be. Those who are in the flesh can't please God. Ouch. Nine. 
But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if it is so that the spirit of God dwells in you. But if any man doesn't have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. Man, distinction, 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 you know. So if you don't have the spirit of Christ in you, you do not belong to God. If you are walking according to the flesh and in full rebellion against Christ, it doesn't matter if you believe the devils believe also and tremble, right? And so we're not talking perfection. Don't get hung up on that. We're talking about a willingness to abide and obey God and let him shore you up where you fail and understand you don't get to make your own decisions anymore. Okay. Uh, let's do nine. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, that the spirit of God dwells in you. But if any man doesn't have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. If Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is alive because of righteousness. Faith of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised up Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Basically what he's saying there, that if you have the spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit of Christ in your flesh, it is powerful enough to subdue the flesh. That when you become the temple of God, it will give you the power to beat your flesh into submission and to deny yourself and to have self-control and to get it right. Right. And so how ridiculous would it be if, if this is the gospel? OK, it's not. But how, how stupid would this be? I love you guys. I sent my son so he would die for you. So you didn't have to die. I know sin hurts you, but deal with it until I come back. <laughs> come and Javen, go in your room. You're not in trouble. I left guns loaded and knives and razor blades, arsenic and poison. Hang out there till I come back. What kind of dad would I be? God didn't do that. God was like, listen, guys, I'm saving you from your sin, not just in your sin, right? He wants to give you the power to stop doing the things that hurt you and stop doing the things that hurt Jesus. Stop doing the things that created separation, right? So it would be a hateful act for God to go, okay, you're not going to die for your sins, but I am never going to help you get over it. You're going to have to stay in your sins until I come back. That is so stupid. I hope you, it sounds stupid coming out of my mouth. I hope it sounds stupid to you guys listening. It's ignorant, right? And so these Christians are like, oh, don't worry about it. Just live, be free. When I stopped trying, I was much happier. Yeah, because you gave into your flesh. You know, let me give you a tip. Salvation isn't about happiness. It's about restoring your relationship back with God that creates happiness. Okay, but you don't have to be happy to be saved. You don't have to be happy to do the will of God. When Jesus says, not my will, but your will be done. And he's crying tears of blood, you know, not very happy, but fully obedient. Okay, Galatians 5, 13 through 25. It says, uh, yeah, top of page six. For you, brothers, were called for freedom. Only don't use your freedom to gain to the flesh, but those but through love be servants to one another. Oh. <laughs> for the whole law is fulfilled in one word in this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself, but if you bite and devour one another, be careful that you don't consume one another. But I say, walk, 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 walk by the Spirit, and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh, right? We just talked about that. For the flesh, lust against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and they are contrary to one another, that you may not do that those things that it, they desire. Verse 18 but if you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. That doesn't mean there's not a law. It doesn't mean you're under it. You're not being judged by it because now you're fulfilling it. You have become the law. What is the new covenant? It's been written in your heart, written in your mind. So you can be like God. So people think like, look, we're not under the law. Of course you're not because now you become it. You're a perfect representation of how God lives and how God acts and what he values. Come on, people. Like, they get people get so turned around. Yeah, we're not under it. We're not being judged by it. We don't get judged by it. We're because the spirit fulfills the law, and now the spirit's in us, and we're fulfilling it. How can we be under that? We're exemplifying the law. And it's funny because they try to, and here's the kicker right here. They they put up here, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. They're like, Well, that's just the law. That's it. Love your neighbor and love God. That's the law. But then here it says you're not under the law. But then they try to take that verse and go, Well, that law he's talking about is Ten Commandments. But you can't have it both ways because you just said love your neighbor and love God is the law. But now you're saying this word says you're not under the law is only to the Christ's Ten Commandments. The circle logic is ridiculous. So like you guys are insane. Are you guys even listening to the way you're sounding? Because it's stupid. And I'm like, it's incoherent. 
Mm-hmm. I'm like, anyways, I'll get off that. 19. Now the deeds of the flesh are obvious, which are adultery. Oh, wow. These look like commandments to me. Mm-hmm. And sexual immorality, uncleanness, lustfulness, adultery, sorcery, hatred, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, rivalries, divisions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these, of which I forewarn you, even also forewarn you, that those who practice such things will not inherit God's kingdom. Practice such things. So you can't be a Christian doing all those things. We heard that earlier about walking in the spirit, right? And um, so verse 22, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, and self-control. The one everybody forgets about against such things. There is oh, no law. Did he just say we're not under the law? Right. Cause there's no law for those things. Mm. Right. Anyways, those who belong to Christ have been crucified the flesh with its passions and less. Verse 25, if we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Okay, it's, it's not hard. It's hard when you have years of indoctrination that we all go through in Sunday churches because the devil's been at perverting the gospel for so long. Exactly. And I grew up in it. Everybody else grows up in it. We have these things entrenched in our brains, you know, and then, you know, they don't really study the Bible like we study the Bible. I guess I we, we over content, <laughs> but oh well, you know, but uh, so we have to understand it's not hard. We're called the new covenant is God's law writing in our hearts and minds and steps. This is how we know what to do and what pleases God, right? We're not under the law. We are the law because we're now the temple of God and the law is written in our hearts, right? And I'm not saying we are the law that we get to like make decisions. I'm saying we are the law in the aspect that he has transformed us to be it, to, to, to fulfill it, to love him supremely, to love our brother and sisters in Christ, right? And those around us. So we don't lie, kill, murder, steal, adultery, covet. We don't have other gods. We don't use his name in vain. You know, and we keep the Sabbath. You know, that's who we are now. That's our natural bent. That's our natural character, right? And so if we're, if we're that way, then how can you be under that? We are that. Anyways, uh, let's do, okay, uh, Romans 8, 12 through 17. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you must die. But if the by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, these are the children of God. So if you're led by the Spirit of God, you're led by, you are the children of God. If you're not, then you're not. It's pretty simple. For you did not receive the bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified with him. Wow. So, guys, did you see the suffering part? Right. Right. We have to suffer with him. We have to, like, the Bible says, Jesus learned obedience through suffering is what it said. 2 Corinthians 5, 1 through 8. For we know that if the earthly house of our tent is dissolved, we have uh, built for God a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For most certainly in this we groan, longing to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. That's our new you. If so be that being clothed, we will not be found naked. For indeed we who are in this tent do groan. That's your flesh. Right. Being burdened that not that we desire to be unclothed, but that we desire to be clothed, that there what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. All right. That's the spirit of life, you know, taking away the flesh. Now, he who has made us from this very thing is God, who also gave us to the, to us the down payment of the spirit. Therefore, we are always confident and know that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We are courageous, I say, and are willing rather to be absent from the body and to be at home with the Lord. In other words, I'm done with this place. I'd rather be there. Amen to that. We have things to do and people to care for and love down here. But man, my heart's there. You know, so we walk by faith. That's trust. Okay. If you feel so led of the Lord and want to know how to donate to this ministry outreach, please visit boylands.com and scroll down the bottom of the name page for a Thank you because boys and wins the point. Boylands.com.